I want to talk about powers of complex numbers. Let's start by calculating the square of this complex number, z equals r times cosine theta plus i sine theta. So I'm going to get r cosine theta plus i sine theta times r cosine theta plus i sine theta. Now, the modulus, I can pull out. I can pull r out from both of these guys, and I get r squared, r times r. And then I get this, cosine theta plus i sine theta squared. So that's cosine squared theta. And then the other real term is going to be plus i squared sine squared theta. And since I'm squaring, it'll be twice the mixed product, i sine theta cosine theta. So plus i times 2 sine theta cosine theta. This is going to give me r squared, cosine squared, and then i squared is negative 1. So this will be minus sine squared plus i times 2 sine theta cosine theta. Now, you may recognize that this, cosine squared minus sine squared, is exactly cosine 2 theta. Cosine 2 theta plus, and 2 sine theta cosine theta is sine 2 theta. These are the double angle identities for sine and cosine. So what I have here is the square of, of z, right? To square z, all I have to do is square the modulus and double the angle. Let's generalize this result. The generalization of this result is actually called de Moivre's theorem. And it says if z is r cosine theta plus i sine theta, then z to the n, where n is any integer, is r to the n times cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. So all you have to do is raise the modulus to the nth power and multiply the argument by n. Let's use de Moivre's theorem in a problem. It says, simplify, express your answer in rectangular form. Let's start with this guy. Here, it's already in, in uh, trigonometric form, so it's really easy to apply de Moivre's theorem. We're going to get the modulus 2 to the fifth power times the cosine of the argument. You multiply the argument times 5. So you get 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3. And I have to put this in rectangular form. So this is going to be 32 times, what's the cosine of 5 pi over 3? It's 1 half. 1 half plus, and the sine of 5 pi over 3 is negative root 3 over 2. So i times, sorry, negative root 3 over 2. So this is 32 times a half, or 16, and then 32 divided by 2, 16 root 3. So minus i times 16 root 3. This is the rectangular form of this complex number to the fifth power. Let's do another example. 1 plus i to the 16th. Now you really wouldn't want to multiply this out by hand. That's, that looks like a pretty big, uh, a pretty big uh, product. So we first need to, to switch this into trigonometric form. De Moivre's theorem requires trigonometric form. So let me just say that the, um, the modulus of this is going to be root 2. And 1 plus i has an argument of pi over 4. So this is cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. And that's all to the 16th power. So this is going to be root 2 to the 16th power. And then cosine, the, the, the argument is going to be multiplied by 16. Pi over 4 times 16 is 4 pi. So this will be cosine of 4 pi plus i sine of 4 pi. Now, the cosine of 4 pi is the same as the cosine of 2 pi, which is the same as cosine of 0. It's 1. And the sine of 4 pi is 0. So this is just going to be 1 plus i times 0 times whatever root 2 to the 16th is. Now, root 2 to the 16th 
is the same as 2 to the 8th because root 2 squared is 2. So this is 2 to the 8th. Now what's 2 to the 8th? 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 to the 8th is 16 squared. 256. So it's 256 times 1. That's our answer. 256. Now, what's interesting about this is that means that one of the 16th roots of 256 is 1 plus i. Anyway, remember, when you're using Dumov's theorem to raise a complex number to a power, you need the complex number to be in trig form. You want to raise the, the modulus to the power and multiply the argument by the power.